In phacoemulsification, the cataract is broken down and sucked out by a needle vibrating at an ultrasonic frequency. Facilities may vary from surgeon to surgeon. In this case, the cataract surgery is being performed under topical anesthesia, which means there are no injections and there is no pad after the surgery and the patient can resume all normal activities right from the day of surgery and have a normal shower the day after the surgery. After making two 1 mm side ports, a main incision measuring 2.8 mm is made. A viscoelastic jelly is injected into the anterior chamber between the cornea and the cataract. A 26 gauge needle is bent at its tip and along its body and used to make a circular opening in the anterior capsule which is called continuous curvilinear capsulorexis. This is like making a circular opening in the transparent peel of a mango. The piece of the anterior capsule is removed with the forceps. Balanced salt solution is injected under the anterior capsule to separate the flesh of the cataract or the cortex from the peel of the cataract or the capsule. The phaco needle along with its infusion sleeve is inserted into the anterior chamber. The nucleus or the seed of the cataract is impaled with the phaco needle using ultrasonic energy and vacuum at the same time. A sharp instrument in the other hand called the chopper is used to crack the seed into two and then this nucleus is rotated by 180 degrees to complete the crack. Now we have two halves of the nucleus. These halves are further broken down into quadrants by further chopping. The moderately hard cataract is ideally suited for this process of chopping. The process of chopping minimizes the amount of phaco energy used. Once the four quadrants are made, each one of these quadrants is further broken down by ultrasonic energy and sucked out using vacuum. The amount of fluid coming into the eye or the infusion, the amount of ultrasonic energy used and the amount of fluid going out of the eye by means of vacuum or suction needs to be precariously balanced throughout this procedure so that the inner layer of the cornea or the endothelium is not damaged by frequent collapses of the anterior chamber. While the quadrants are removed one after the other, care needs to be taken that the phaco tip does not damage the posterior capsule or the transparent peel behind for this is absolutely necessary for a successful intraocular lens implantation. A damage to the posterior capsule may also lead to a nuclear fragment going through into the vitreous. And this is the last of the nuclear fragments being removed. Now we are left with a circular opening in the transparent capsular bag with the fleshy cortex. This fleshy cortex is removed by simultaneous by manual irrigation and aspiration. The aspiration probe reaches under the capsule and brings out fleshy cortex while the infusion keeps the anterior chamber formed. The aspiration probe is moved from the right to the left hand to allow access to all parts of the capsular bag. The capsular bag is inflated with viscoelastic jelly. This is a three-piece hydrophobic acrylic foldable IOL. This has a central 6 mm optic and two limbs which are called the haptics. The IOL is removed from its casing and placed inside a cartridge. The wings of the cartridge are folded to fold the IOL. The cartridge in turn is inserted into an injector which has a rod which is advanced to deliver the IOL into the eye. The tubular part of the cartridge is inserted into the anterior chamber and the IOL is pushed through this. As the IOL emerges, 
it gradually unfolds into the anterior chamber. The advancing rod of the injector is used to tuck in the trailing haptic into the capsular bag. The lens is now rotated in the capsular bag to make sure that it is absolutely well centered. Once good centration is achieved, the residual viscoelastic is removed by biomanual irrigation aspiration. It is important to remove all of the viscoelastic material used. Thereafter, a meiotic agent is injected into the anterior chamber to constrict the pupil. The wound is hydrated with balanced salt solution to ensure that the lips are well opposed. Some more balanced salt solution is injected into the anterior chamber and final centration is performed. All the wounds are hydrated including the side ports. The wound is tested for any possible leakage. The speculum which was holding the lids apart is now removed. The patient is asked to squeeze the lids and the tension and the leakage is tested once again. The patient is now discharged without any pad and is free to resume all normal activities.